God. We want to receive His blessings in abundance. A very warm welcome and good morning to all of you as we join with the rest of the nation observing National New Year. Our theme on this Sunday, they recognize the Lord. And before we proceed, as we are far and wide spread out, may I request all those in the latter half of the church, if you feel comfortable, please come up. It will make every one of us feel warm and you know, encouraged. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Alleluia. Blessed be God. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. We join as we sing the first hymn, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. Passover. Lamb has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by, rejoice by putting away all mal malice and evil and confessing our sins with sincere and true heart. The confession all. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have we done have evil in your sight. sight. And we, we must sorry and repent. Have mercy on us, 
Wash away our wrong ways and cleanse us from our sins. Renew your right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God who love and power forgive and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit. Raise us to new life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, and made disciples of Lord. By the same grace, may we be strengthened know the power of all those and and joy in the hope of the Through Jesus Christ, our peace, who is alive and raised with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. New Testament reading. <laughs> the New Testament reading is taken from Acts 3, verses 12 to 19. When Peter saw the people, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why are you surprised at this? And why do you stare at us? Do you think that it was by means of our own power or godliness that we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has given divine glory to his servant Jesus. But you handed him over to the authorities, and you rejected him in Pilate's presence, even after Pilate had decided to set him free. He was holy and good, but you rejected him, and instead you asked Pilate to do you the favor of turning loose a murderer. You killed the one who leads to life, but God raised him from death, and we are witnesses to this. It was the power of his name that gave strength to this lame man. What you see and know was done by faith in his name. It was faith in Jesus that has made him well. As you can all see, and now my brothers, I know that what you and your leaders did to Jesus was due to your ignorance. God announced long ago through all the prophets that his Messiah had to suffer, and he made it come true in this way. Repent then and turn to God so that he will forgive your sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for Psalm, the Psalm chapter 4, to be read alternatively. 
Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will your people turn my glory to shame? How long will you love in and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. May many Lord of us sing who will bring us prosperity. Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <coughs> The second Bible reading is taken from the Epistle of uh, 1 John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. See how much the Father has loved us. His love is so great that we are called God's children, and so in fact we are. This is why the world does not know us. It has not known God. My dear friends, we are now God's children, but it is not yet clear what we shall become. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. Everyone who has this hope in Christ keeps himself pure, just as Christ is pure. Whoever sins is guilty of breaking God's law, because sin is a breaking of the law. You know that Christ appeared in order to take away sins, and that there is no sin in him. So everyone who lives in union with Christ does not continue to sin, but whoever continues to sin has never seen him or known him. Let no one deceive you, my children. Whoever does what is right is righteous, just as Christ is righteous. This is the word of the Lord.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. It is true, the Lord is risen and has appeared to his people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24, from verse 36 to 48. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus appears to his disciples. While the two were telling them this, suddenly the Lord himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were terrified, thinking that they were seeing a ghost. But he said to them, Why are you alarmed? Why are these doubts coming up in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet, and see that it is I myself. Feel me, and you will know, for a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. He said this and showed them his hands and his feet. They still could not believe. They were so full of joy and wonder. So he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of cooked fish, which he took and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the very things I told you about while I was still with you. Everything written about me in the law of Moses, the writings of the prophets and the Psalms had to come true. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, this is what is written. The Messiah must suffer and must rise from death three days later. And in his name, the message about repentance and the forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Perhaps the most impactful advocate of Christianity in the 20th century the author C.S. Lewis once wrote these words. I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. And this one sentence from C.S. Lewis perfectly summarizes the theme and the teaching of the gospel portion that we heard read to us just now. And the reason is that in this story, the disciples experienced this twin experience of seeing. I believe in the sun because I can see it. And understanding that by through the sun, I can see everything else as well. Before we get into the story, I think it's relevant to pause a little to clarify an important relationship between reason, the application of our minds, and faith. And it is particularly relevant when we are considering the resurrection. Because nothing stretches reason more, almost to breaking point, than the idea of a resurrection. Now there is a view, a very traditional view, even in the church, that faith bridges the gaps in reason. The things we cannot provide evidence for, we accept by faith. Now, I think that is something that we must reject, that idea. Because in the Bible, faith is never put in opposition to reason. In the famous chapter on faith, Hebrews 11, 
starts off by saying that faith is the assurance, the certainty of things we do not see. So in other words, faith is set against sight and not reason. So applying your mind is a very scriptural idea. Because firstly, the scripture says that our mind is the vehicle by which God reveals himself to us. Romans chapter 12 verse 2, it says, we do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And then we are also told in Matthew chapter 22 verse 37, that the mind is one of the faculties by which we love God. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your hearts, with all your minds, and with all your soul. Now it is important that we have a reasonable basis for ourselves, firstly for our sake, because if you don't really, if you haven't really thought through your faith and have a reasonable basis for it, when times get tough, faith begins to evaporate. Once again, C.S. Lewis beautifully puts it like this, giving this example. You never know how much you really believe anything until its truth or falsehood becomes a matter of life and death to you. It is easy to say you believe a rope to be strong and sound as long as you are merely using it to tie a box. But suppose you had to hang by that rope over a precipice. Wouldn't you then first discover how much you really trusted it? So it is important to be, have a reasonable basis for yourself, for your own sake, and for the sake of others. Because when you engage with people, Apostle Paul tells us that we should be ready to provide a reasonable basis for us, for our faith. In 1 Peter, sorry, the Apostle Peter, in 1 Peter 3, Verse 15, this is what he says. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. And so the, re the, the foundation for reason and rationality is to see and understand. And this was the experience of the disciples in the event that we just heard read to us. So let's dive into the story. The first part of, of the story is all to do about seeing. C.S. Lewis's statement, I believe in the sun because I can see it. Right? And so the first part of the story is all about that aspect of of learning for us. So just to provide a bit of context, the empty tomb had been discovered. The uh, women had conveyed the message to the 12. The two uh, disciples from Emmaus had just returned and were telling the disciples about their experience. And then suddenly, Jesus is amongst them. And he greets them with probably the most incongruous greeting. He says, peace be with you. And the response he evoked was the furthest from peace. And then you see over the next few verses a very fascinating progression of emotions and conversation. It starts off with the disciples being, being terrified. They were startled and frightened because they, saw, they thought they saw a ghost. And then Jesus speaks to them and says, look, it is me. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you can see that I have. And then that terror begins to turn to joy and amazement, but still they didn't believe. It was like a joy and amazement which underlined the feeling that this was too good to be true. And then Jesus goes on and says, do you have something to eat? Give me something to eat. Probably the ultimate proof, if you like, evidence that he was indeed bodily resurrected. And so you see in every stage of this conversation, what is Jesus doing? 
he is appealing to their reason. He is appealing to their minds. He says, look, a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones. I have. Still don't believe, give me something to eat. And so the important thing for our faith is that we must grapple with what we see. Don't take things at face value. So, for example, if you have a very close-knit group of friends, they're not more than 12, and in this group of friends there is an acknowledged leader whom you, whom you all love and respect, and then one day, tragically, all of you see him die, and then about a few days later, say about three days later, some of your friends begin to tell you that they have seen him. Now, what is your response? You had better ask questions, isn't it? Which is why I think uh, we must have a project to rehabilitate Thomas or the perception of Thomas within the church. And rather than calling him Doubting Thomas, maybe we can start calling him Rational Thomas. Because we are asked to apply our minds. So that's the first part. They saw and they, they believed what they saw. And now the second part of the equation begins to happen in the story. Where Jesus explains to them what they see. And he starts off by saying, this is what I told you while I was with you. Why are you surprised? And in verse 45 it tells us that he opened their mind. So just a word of caution. When we say the application of our mind is important and reason is, has a certain place in our faith. It is a mind that must be enlightened, not by our own understanding, but by the Spirit. And so Jesus begins to connect the dots. He explains what they are seeing by referring to the law, the prophets, and the psalm. The entire cultural experience of the Jews things that have been burned into their psyche for centuries. The very, very familiar, the law, the prophets, and the psalm. And he explains the role of the Messiah with reference to these. And so he explains history. He explains the future. But most importantly, he explains to them their place in all of this. Where he says, you see me, now you understand why this had to happen. And you are my witnesses. He gives them a purpose. He gives them a direction. He gives them a sense of where they fit in in the overall scheme of things. And that is what understanding is. They saw the risen Jesus and they understood everything else. I believe in the, risen, the rising of the sun not only because I see it, but by, by it I can see everything else. So how do we today, this morning, see and understand? How do we look at Jesus and understand our place? The short answer is with great difficulty. Reflect on the emotions of the disciples. Abject terror transformed to amazement and joy. When did we last fear such awe when we considered Jesus. Jesus had pity on us. He understood our condition. He understood our generation, the generations of those whom he describes as those who have not seen. When he tells Thomas, you believe because you have seen, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe, our generation. I don't believe that was a rebuke to Thomas. Rather, I believe that was a nod of acknowledgement by Jesus to us. Because since we don't have the immediacy of seeing and touching and enjoying a meal with Jesus, we don't have that sense of immediacy. We are easily distracted. We become like the characters in Jesus' parable of the wedding feast. We are faced with this enormously joyful event. And what do we say to ourselves? I have brought a land. I must 
look after it. I have bought some oxen. I must tend to them. And I have married a wife. Wealth, vocation, and family obligation. All of those conspire to distract us. So we say he is risen and we see him and they say, yes, but I have obligations to manage my wealth. I have my job and my vocation and I have my societal and family obligation. But although Jesus acknowledged the difficulty that we have by saying, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe, he doesn't excuse us because we have been given the tools to see and understand. And these are the scriptures. The fact that we have before us the accounts of Jesus is a miracle in itself. Books of ancient literature are called books of antiquity. And the reliability of books of antiquity are judged by two factors. How close are the manuscripts to the point at which the event actually occurred? And how many manuscripts and copies do we have? On both counts, there is no book of antiquity that comes close to the reliability of the scriptures. And so we have the tools. Study. Grapple with what you see in it. Read the Gospels. Read one synoptic Gospel and, one, and the Gospel of John. Say, read Matthew, read John, and read the books. Read the Acts of the Apostles. Read it as literature. Read, read it as if you are reading a novel. Absorb what you see. Grapple with what you see. Read wider. There are men of knowledge and expertise, a group of authors who are called apologists, people who make a defense for the faith. Read those books so that you read the scriptures back again with new eyes. You have people like C.S. Lewis. Read his mere Christianity. You have the bishop, uh, the Anglican bishop in the UK, N.T. Wright. People like Lee Strobel, Joshua MacDonald, William Lane Craig. And then the old church theologians, people like Aquinas, you have books which gives us introductions to their thinking. These are apologists who defended the faith. Read them so that you again read the scriptures with new eyes. So there is no immediacy, which means more work for us. We have to work harder to grapple, to see, and to understand. But there is one thing that we still share in common with the generation who saw. We are the generation who didn't see or doesn't see. But we share one thing in common with the generation who saw. And that is that the stakes are still very, very high. What is at stake remains the same as it was to the disciples. It remains the same to us. Read how important the stakes were to Paul in his writing 1 Corinthians 15, verses 17 to 19 and 30 to 32. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most pitied. And as for us, why do we end up endanger ourselves every hour? I face death every day. Yes, just as surely I boast about you in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought wild beasts in Ephesus with no more than human hopes, what have I gained? If the dead are not raised, let us drink, eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. The stakes were high to fall. If the resurrection was a fake and a hoax, everything collapses. There's nothing more to do than just eat, drink and be merry, because there is no meaning and tomorrow we die. The stakes are the same to us. So we owe it to ourselves to make the effort to see and understand. And once we do this, there is the promise in the Bible of seek and you shall find. And there is a promise of an effort to search, to seek and understand Jesus. If you do that with diligence, you are promised that you will find. And if we find that, like the disciples did in this, in this wonderful event in the gospel, then we set the base, having seen and understood, for the most difficult part. And that is where faith comes in. That is where a leap comes in. 
because then we have to step into the unknown. A leap of faith is not bridging a gap to reason. It is not saying, look, I don't have evidence for this, I just have to have faith. You are expected to have faith on a reasonable basis, with evidence for it to be reasonable. But you are expected to leap thereafter into the unseen based on that faith. Faith is belief in motion. And that is the experience of every single character you find in that roll call of honor in Hebrews chapter 11. The heroes of the faith, Abraham and Moses and Joseph and Gideon. What did they do? They literally moved without knowing what was going to be the conclusion of their move because they had seen and understood and had a reasonable basis to believe. And on that foundation, they moved. In the portion of scripture we read to us in the epistles, we are told that this kind of belief, that this kind of seeing and understanding gives us an assurance and it gives us a, a commission. It gives us an action. It impels us to act here and now. The assurance and a call for action. Let me read to you from 1 John Chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, part of the epistle that you heard read to us. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. We don't really know what's going to happen when we die. But we know because we have seen Jesus, we are going to be like him. Now that is an assured hope. That assured hope doesn't give us the license to forget about earth, to be too heavenly minded, to be of any earthly use. Rather, it impels us to action here and now in everyday living. Because, because of that assured hope, we are asked to be pure as he was pure. And purity as far as Jesus is concerned. Is to, just, is, to, is to do with just relationships and resources, not dry rules and regulations to follow. Purity is to do with relationships and resources. And our assuredness of our hope impels us to act today and tomorrow in the way we construct our relationships and use our resources. The bishop I referred to a little while ago, Bishop N.T. Wright, probably summarizes this best when he, when he wrote this. Jesus' resurrection is the beginning of God's new project, not to snatch people away from earth to heaven, but to colonize earth with the life of heaven. That, after all, is what the Lord's prayer is about. God bless you all. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, to God from true God. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnated of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly him to be human. For our sake, he was crucified and was crucified, and he suffered the death and was buried. On the third day, he was again in the modern scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father.
and the life of the world to come. Amen. response may clear our prayer. Living God, long ago, faithful women proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection, and the world was changed forever. Help us to keep faith with them, that our witness may be as bold, our love as deep, and joy and amazement as real as was theirs when he appeared to them. Gracious God, help us all to play an active day part in the vision of the chaplaincy, ever focusing on Christ's call to all of us to be witnesses and to make disciples of all mankind. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator God, you give us a beautiful world to live in and to care for. We know that in many areas, our stewardship has been a failure. Yet, through the victory of Jesus Christ, we know also that you can restore all things in glory. And so, we pray for a change of heart and attitude, an awakening to a better way of living, and the courage to reject wrong principles. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our Vika, Father Peri Brahir, Father Tilak Jawadana, and all church organizations that each of us might make use of our individual talents, enabling each church group to flourish as a witness to the one body of the church. Help us to spread the warmth of your love to everyone we meet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who do not share our Easter joy, especially those living in the shadow of darkness and despair, and for those whose illness narrows their view of the world. We especially pray for all those who have requested prayer, and in the quietness of our hearts, we raise before you. Those who we know who are also in need, and the parishioners who are sick, Mr. Indika Joseph, Mrs. June Vijay Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Faithful God, in the week that lies before us, may we reflect your love in our families, our church, and our community, so that the world can see that we are followers of Christ and children of the Most High God, and draw others into his loving care. We especially pray for those who celebrate their birthdays, Ruiza Zela, Dilana Begunwardana, Manisha Dimel, Amanda Begunwardana, Jeremiah Peters, Sri Jasena Naika, Marina Daniel, Melania B. Vikrama, Janine Ruduvai, Selvin Nyanamuthu, Shamini Rajendra. And wedding anniversaries, Mr. and Mrs. Dharan Sena Diraja, Mr. and Mrs. H. S. Williams, Mr. and Mrs. Kate Jaisinga, Mr. and Mrs. Rajiv Vinatilaka. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we and all your servants, being strengthened together in the eternal fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may with joy behold your Son at this coming again in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In our prayers, we also remember the family of the late Denise Premachandra. We thank God for her life. 
and having called her home by leaving, relieving her from the limitations of life. We thank God for her life and her witness. Lord, hear our prayer. We have cried some unto thee. Join together in the offertory prayer as we say, All things come from you and of your own do we give you, Creator and Lord of the universe, ever ignored by the holy angels. Accept these gifts which you present at your holy table, and give them the dedication of our lives to your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, gracious Father, creator of heaven and earth. Now we give you thanks because in his victory over the grave, a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin is ended, a broken world is being renewed, and humanity is once again made whole. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Holy indeed are you, gracious Father, eternal sovereign, who in all your gifts and works manifests your holiness to all humanity. Holy is your only begotten Jesus Christ, through whom you did order the universe. And holy is your ever blessed Spirit, who reveals all things even the deep things of you, O God. Just as yourself are holy, so also you created us in your own image that we might live in holy fellowship. When we disobeyed your commandments, you did not abandon us, but you guided us as a merciful Father. You revealed yourself to us through the sages, the law and the prophets, and through your redeeming acts in history. When the time is ripe, you came among us through your Son, Jesus, you sent into the world to share our human nature in order that the Lord Jesus might revive your own image in us. Generous God, God Jesus, Jesus loves us, us and sacrificed self for us and helped new life great, 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 great. On the very night that he was betrayed to suffer death upon the cross for us, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, Almighty Father, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same manner after supper, he took the cup also. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of you from this. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, live by your resurrection. The way we come so, Father, we present this bread and cup in communion with your whole church, in fellowship with Blessed Mary and all the saints, and in union with all creation. We celebrate your Son's death and victory, giving thanks for all that Christ has prepared for us, for preparing us for all that lies ahead, as we receive the benefits of Christ's life, death, resurrection, and session in glory. And we eagerly await the heavenly banquet after Christ's coming again. And we entreat you, most merciful God, hear us and send your all Holy Spirit on us and these your gifts. May they be blessed and hallowed by that life giving power. May be for us the body and blood of your most dearly loved Son to the end. That we receiving the same may be sanctified and filled with your grace and heavenly blessing. Accept this our sacrifice and praise and thanks to me. Make us one body in Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the womb and with whom and in hope in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All my name be to your mighty Father, well without end. Amen. The bread which you break is in sharing the body of Christ. We believe in your one bread, one body, for we all partake of one bread. As I say, Christ has taught us, we now pray. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. 
gifts of God for the people of God. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lamb of God, you take us away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sin of the world. Grant us thy peace. Glory we think and take the holy sacrament to your comfort. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Give thanks to the Lord God is gracious. God's mercy and yours forever. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Say it again. Almighty Lord, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the Son of Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have your sins. We will be sacrificed. Send us out in one of your spirit. Amen. Lord our God, through Jesus you have assured your children eternal life and in our baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin, raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In our prayers, we also pray for the peace of the world. Very especially we pray for peace in the region of the Middle East, where the conflict has escalated overnight. Countries shutting airspace, consequences, more hardship and misery on human beings. We pray for courage to return to conversation and for all people to uphold the dignity of people irrespective of who they may be. Lord, hear our prayer. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. 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 Seated please for a few announcements. Next Sunday, we have our services as usual, 7 a.m. in Singhala and 8.30 a.m. in English and 5.30 p.m. again in English. If you like to support the home that we run in Navala, St. Luke's home, you could do so by making a contribution towards meals. And if you would like to observe a special day in your life or a loved one or give thanks to God for the life of a loved one who has gone from our presence and passed on. I'd like to share that moment and occasion with the residents of the home. Please contact the matron or the parish office and we will give you the details. Also details are available in the parish newsletter that has been sent to you. Volunteers are required to come and support in the medical clinic that functions every Wednesday evening. If you are led to support and want to offer your services, please contact the parish office and we will be happy to share the details with you. The National Christian Council is organizing a time for world peace and prayer, a time of prayer for world peace. And that will be on Saturday the 27th of April at, from 9.30 a.m. onwards at the Cinnamon Gardens Baptist Church. Your prayers are requested for the following to be ordained to the priesthood on Thursday the, <coughs> on Thursday the 9th of May at the, as the service takes place at the Cathedral of Christ the Living Saviour at 4 p.m. The Reverend Anita Navaratna, the Reverend Amila Fernando, the Reverend Nivil Pereira, and the Reverend Seledure Balendra are to be ordained to the priesthood. Your prayers for them would be appreciated. I particularly want to uh, thank all those of you who have, amidst many a challenge, made it this morning to church. Your presence is greatly appreciated and indeed an encouragement to us. God bless you as you go on your way 
May we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. The hymn, Love Divine or Love's Excellent. Sorry, there's one more announcement. There's one more announcement. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. First of all, we'd like to wish you a very happy, prosperous Singhala and Tamil New Year. So, I'm excited to announce that our youth have organized a special event happening on the 28th of April, 2024, soon after the service. So, we are going to be celebrating Aurudu at Sendhu's. Uh, I'm sure you all had a really great time last, last year and be ready for another session of fun and games and fellowship. So let's look at a recap video from last year and remember all the fun that we had. registrations today so if you are interested please give your names to me I'll be at the back of the church uh, I look forward to seeing all of your names if what you have seen interests you it only can get better when you are there so please make it a point to be present on the 28th soon after our morning service to join in a time of fellowship and fun as a community the last thing Love divine or love's excellent. Mm -hmm. 